Hey, welcome guys. For all of my subscribers, welcome, welcome, welcome. For all of you who are new to my channel, thank you for taking a couple of minutes of your day to spend with me. Uh, we have a, man a marriage ministry and we like to do a video every month to encourage those who are standing for their marriage through divorce, um, maybe through separation or just hardship within the marriage. Um, I would like to thank you all so much um, for joining me and we would love for you to subscribe. Um, please like and share the video. I'm hoping that this will answer some questions and maybe uh, help to minister to, to those who are standing. Um, I'd also like to thank you guys for sewing into the ministry. We are just so blessed that you guys care and love us so much to sow into the ministry. So we thank you for that. Um, as you guys see, the title of this video is five reasons for hindrances and delays to your breakthrough. Now we plan on having a boot camp um, in our WhatsApp group uh, next month. So stay to the end of the video. We'll give you the details. Um, one of the things that I want to say about the WhatsApp group, and for you all who don't know, um, we have a ministry online on Facebook. Um, you will find that in my information where that's located. Um, we also have a group on WhatsApp where um, there are over a hundred members there and uh, we've got six admins and we're there for you 24 seven. We've got people from Africa, uh, Italy, we are all over the world and there is always support within this group. Um, and if you like information on that, we'll talk about that at the end of the video. But as you can see, the title of the, the video is five reasons for hindrances and delays to your breakthrough. Um, so before we uh, start that, I'd like to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we glorify you and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your love. Father God, there are so many people who are standing for their marriages and trusting in your word. Your word says what you brought together, let no man put us under. And Father God, you said that you hate divorce. And so Lord, as they stand, we ask you to give them supernatural faith that Father God, they will stand and trust in what your word says. And Father God, we're asking you to cover them and that Father God, you allow this word to minister to their hearts. We thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, guys, we're in the month of June and I just have to say in our WhatsApp group, we had three uh, marriages that reconnected. They're not full reconciliation, but they reconnected and we're just so excited. Um, we saw several dates occurring. We just saw se several spouses uh, coming home. And so God is just so good with how he's doing things. And we're just believing in the month of June, we're going to see supernatural breakthroughs. And so one of the things that we wanted to go through is what is hindering some of these breakthroughs. And so we're going to jump right in. One of the things that I did is I said, Lord, show me places in the Bible where there was breakthroughs and, and, and how we can learn through, learn about some of the things that we've seen in the Bible. And of course, he led me to the greatest and longest hindrance and delay, which was the Israelites, as we saw that they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And so we jumped right into the first uh, thing, the first reason um, for the hindrance, and that is a lack of faith and disbelief. See, God gave the Israelites a promise. He told them that they would be set free. Exodus, seven, uh, Exodus 3, 7 through 8 says, Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are, e who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. Masters. I know their suffering and I have come down to deliver them out of the hands of the Egyptians and bring them out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So God God had given them that promise. A lot of you have been given that promise. A lot of you know the word of God. The word of God says, what I brought together, let no man put us under. And God hates divorce. We understand that God uses marriage to show the love of Christ for the church. And so we know that he is for your marriage. And a lot of you, you've been coming across my pages. It's not a coincidence that you're coming across my videos or coming across my, my Facebook page that God is calling 
calling you to stand. And so you have a promise. But the problem with the Israelites is that they they didn't believe it. They they wavered. They you know they were double minded. They actually got a chance to see all the plagues. They saw all the things that Moses did, and they still had unbelief. But one of the things that we have to understand it just takes a mustard seed of faith to see mountains move. And so with us, we God has shown us with to me one of the most wonderful miracles that he shows me every day is that he wakes me up. And so if he's waking you up, that's a miracle. That's something that a lot of us kind of just look at and we take for granted, but you're still here. And there's some things that God wants to use you to do to move the kingdom of God. That's your first miracle miracles. There's so many things going on in your life that you can look and say, Lord, I thank you and have the faith that God's going to do what he says he's going to do. So our first hindrance is the lack of faith being double-minded. Once God has given you a word, you've got to stand on that word. The number two, the second thing that we see is staying in the past, not being able to forget what has happened, always talking about it. We see in Exodus 14, 11, that the NIV version says that they said to Moses, was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Uh, many, many times they were like, we want to go back to being a slave. We should have stayed as slaves. They remember that trauma. They remember that hurt. And it's more comforting to them to go through that hurt to, than to, to go forward with the un, unknown things that are going on in front of them or even believing in what God has said. And so a lot of us, when we've gone through trauma, when we've gone through hurt, one of the, the most important things that has to happen before you stand is you've got to grieve and you've got to heal. And there's so many things out there that helps with self-deliverance. A lot of you are going through rejection. You're going through fear. You're going through these hurts. And it, you've got to heal from that before you can ever start to stand for someone else. And so we see a lot of people, they're not healing. They're staying in the hurt. You know, the next thing that we have to understand is that Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But one of the things that God has shown us, and Satan knows this as well, is that he's got to flee when we resist him. And so a lot of us, we start standing up against the wiles and schemes of the enemy, and he has to flee. God has given us dominion over all things over the earth, and the enemy is beneath our feet. But one of the things that happens when you go through the hurt and the turmoil and the toxic nature of the enemy are strongholds mindsets. And those things have to be broken. A lot of you are stuck in that mindset of rejection and hurt. You've got to protect yourself. One of the most craziest things about mental strongholds and being hurt is that people begin to become offended. And once you become offended, you start trying to take care of yourself. You start trying to do self things and self protection. And I'm going to, you know, do this on my own. And you start rejecting what God has said for you to do. You can't even hear God because you're trying to do your own thing. And so we understand that we've got to put on the full armor of God. We put on that helmet, anything that exalts itself against the, the, knowledge of God, it has to be cast down. And so the strongholds are a big deal that people are holding on to because of the hurt. The next thing that we see is that people talk all the time about it. A lot of times when I first get calls from you guys, I do understand you want me to understand your situation. You're speaking about it. You got to get out. I think that it even validates your pain when you can explain to people what you've been through. But then you keep talking about it and then you keep remembering it and then you keep bringing things up. And then when you see something happen, you're like, that's just like when he did that. We have to understand there's power in the tongue when we speak. And only that, your atmosphere cannot change if you're living in the past and talking about it. And so that's another hindrance that you're always talking and staying in the past and staying in that hurt. Healing can't happen if you keep reliving these moments. And the, the biggest thing about staying in the past that we have to do 
is forgiveness. God says seven times 70 a day, you have to forgive. But see, there's a trick in there. You know, the world tells us, hey, I'll forgive you, but I'm not going to forget. And see, that's not how God is. God is a God that not only forgives you, he throws that sin into the sea of forgetfulness and doesn't remember it. And so if you haven't truly not only forgiven, but forgotten what's going on, you still kind of stay in that unforgiveness realm. And I'm going to tell you, your prayers are hindered. You have to get into a posture of surrender and completely forgive those people because at the end of the day, the wicked shall have no peace. See, we have to understand that there is a wrath from God, but you got to let God fight those battles. Ephesians 19, 19 or Ephesians 14, 14 says that he will fight our battles. We are to remain at peace. So we have to understand that unforgiveness can also delay or hinder what God has for you. And so we'll go into the third. Um, the third thing is self work. <laughs> that it to, to me is like the biggest issue because you guys get tired. We see that the Israelites, you know, they saw uh, uh, Moses do all of these things. They saw the Red Sea part. You know, they came out, they saw the Egyptians killed. And then when they came out into the wilderness, you know, Moses went up um, to uh, retrieve the Ten Commandments. And when he was gone, they got impatient and they asked his brother Aaron to create a gold calf. And so they began to worship on their own. They started doing things in their own will and what we have to understand a lot of times you guys go through deliverance you get free you start knowing who God is and then you want to be the Holy Spirit for your your spouse you want to tell them what God is telling them to do you want to speak to them and what you're not understanding you're dealing with a person who's deceived and so they're not going to hear anything you have to say you have to allow God to to do these things for you I have to tell you the Holy Spirit can speak louder than what you can ever say it is through your humility Humility, the posture of your heart that you're going to see change. And a lot of you guys are tiring yourself out. You know, I hear people saying, I'm praying, I'm fasting, I'm doing all these things and nothing's changing. It is because you have to surrender. You're trying to do it on your own. See, so you understand that God He's not going to share his glory with you. And one of the things that we have to understand is God's ways are so much higher than our ways. There's things that he's working out that we don't want things to come to pass too quickly. You know, you want God to, to do things in his perfect timing. And so we see that self-work is a hindrance because you guys become weary, because you tire yourselves out. You've got to learn how to surrender. Um, the next one is idolizing the promise. In Exodus 7, 16, it says, then say to him, the Lord, the God of Hebrews has sent me to say to you, let my people go so they may worship me in the wilderness. Now, one of the things that we always ask is, what does the word say? What, is, what does he say? He says, let my people go. Most people think it's let my people go so that they can go to the promised land. But we clearly see that God says, no, let my people go so that they can worship me. See, a lot of you are not understanding that, yes, God has given you a promise, but you begin to idolize that promise. You begin to look at that promise and not the things that God is trying to bring you through. See, it is through the suffering that perseverance is, is brought about. And so sometimes God is trying to show you how to worship him. He's trying to show you how to understand him before you get to the promised land. And so some of you have cut all that out and you're just trying to get to the promise. You've forgotten about God. You've forgotten about everything else that it takes to get to this point. And you are placing that promise as an idol. And so we see that as being a hindrance. God is trying to get you guys to, to get through some of the things that have been placed inside of you. There's so many seeds of hurt. There's so many seeds of brokenness that he's trying to melt off of you. And sometimes it takes the suffering. It takes the worship. It takes the praise to, to get us to get to where God needs us to be. And he wants to get you there before you get to the promised land. So idolizing the promise is not the thing that he wants us to do. He wants us to worship him. He wants us to praise him in in the wilderness. And so that's number four. Number five, our final uh, thing that we see even in the secular realm is impatience, time. 
You become wayward spouses yourselves. You become prodigals because you're looking at the time and you're like, how long is this going to take? You know, one of the things that we saw with the Israelites that they were traveling for 40 years and that trip was only 11 days. And so we've got to understand that God's timing is perfect. A lot of times some of you have been standing for three months and you're like, I can't do this anymore. You're standing for 10. I've talked to some people who are standing for three and five. You have to understand that everything that God is doing and how he's doing, we've got to trust it. And a lot of you are like, I'm not getting any younger, but see, God has given us a promise. Joel 2 25 says, and I will restore all the years that the locust has eaten away, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm. See, God has promised that he will restore that time. And we've got to understand it is perfect in his timing. See, God is the alpha and the omega. He can see the beginning and the end. And so he has uh, the propensity to be able to see all these different pieces that he's got to put together for your good. See, what the enemy meant for your harm our father turns it around for your good. And so that is a big deal. Even when you talk to people who have divorced, they're like, man, I wish I wouldn't have divorced when I was so angry. I wish I would have taken the time to, 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 you know, get through my anger before I made such rash decisions. It's a timing thing. I've seen people standing and they walk away right before their spouse is about to turn back. And so if God has given you a promise, no longer look at the time, no longer get off your stand. You can't just keep getting up and, and getting back on and getting off. Stay consistent because while God is working on your spouse, trust me, he's working on you. This time that you're seeing, he's working on you. And I, you know, I want to get back to something about the Israelites, you know, they were wandering and wandering and, you know, murmuring and complaining. But one of the things that we saw is that God always provided for them. He made sure he gave them water. He provided uh, manna for them. And we see that they wandered for 40 years and their shoes were not worn. Their clothes were not worn. So in your time that you're, you're waiting on God to move, he's taking care of you. He's watching over you. He's building you up. And we have to trust in that. God is just such a good, good God. And so those are the five things. We'll quickly go through it again. Lack of faith, disbelief. Number two, staying in the past. Number three, self-work. Number four, idolizing your promise. And number five, impatience. You know, that we are, are waiting on God to quickly do things instead of just waiting in his timing. And so with these five things, we plan on doing a boot camp. We're going to probably uh, do the boot camp on Zoom. It will, it will be one week. We're working on the courses of going through helping you all get that faith. And the way we get the faith, let me tell you something. Faith comes by hearing. It is the word of God. A lot of you are saying, I can't hear God. You know, he's not talking to me. Open up that Bible. Open up your word and you'll hear from God. We're going to also understand and help you guys with self deliverance, um, growing, growing past the pain, understanding those strongholds, breaking those strongholds, putting on the full armor of God. We've got a full course and we'd love for you guys to join us. Um, if you are interested, you guys know how I am. I would like for you to like this video. Please join. Um, uh, please, please, uh, please subscribe. <laughs> please make sure you subscribe and leave me a comment. I don't like to leave the links um, for a lot of you are, are writing in asking me to join the WhatsApp. Don't like to leave the links um, up. I like to know who's coming in the group because we're very personable. We're putting out our personal information. And so I kind of like to screen people before they come in. We've got several groups. We've got groups for restored. We've got groups um, for breaking curses. We've got groups for prayer warriors, which we're getting ready to go in praying hard, um, you know, for our, our couples in the group. And then we've got a, a group that just every day you've got someone lifting you up, making sure that if you're having a hard day, they are there to make you smile. Um, so I want to say a prayer over this. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, Father, you're just such a good God. 
Lord, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing in these marriages. We thank you, Father, for so much movement that, Father God, you're filling up your people with the Holy Spirit. You're changing their hearts. That, Father God, they're persevering in the suffering. Suffering. They are not standing down. That, Father God, they are standing against the wiles of the enemy. They recognize it. Father God, you said that your people perish for the lack of knowledge. That, Father God, they are reading your word and understanding that they are not fighting against people. That, Father God, they see the spiritual realm and they are standing against it because, Father God, we know that they are already defeated. The enemy is already defeated. And so, Lord, we thank you for this supernatural faith that you're placing in your people. Father God, we thank you, Father, for always covering us, always watching over us. That, Father God, they're crying out to you. And that, Father God, we can have confidence that if we approach you and ask you, anything that's in your will, that my Lord, not only will you hear us, but Father God, you'll answer us. And so Lord, your people are crying out for a restoration of their marriages. They're crying out for the salvation of their spouses. They're crying out for their prodigal children to turn back to you. That my Lord, right now, we pray over these spouses and children. That my Lord, we know that only through a godly sorrow will we see true repentance. And that Father God, there a man may go his own way in his own heart. Heart, but you will orchestrate those steps. And so, Lord, we ask you to orchestrate their steps to a brokenness so that they will find you, my Lord. That, Father God, they will bend down on their knee and cry out to you. Lord, we cover them. We cover them with the blood of the Lamb, understanding that it washes them clean as snow. And we thank you, Jesus, that you sent your great Son to die on the cross, not only for us, but our spouses our children and our family. And so Lord, right now we declare and decree restoration over everyone seeking it. That Father God, we know the, your, your word that you said a man will leave his mother and father and he will cleave and become one flesh with his wife, with his spouse. And so Lord, we glorify you for that. We glorify your word that you watch over and it will never return void. We thank you, Lord, that we will see these marriages restored. That Father God, we will see that these spouses who were standing. They will not give up. That Father God, they will not. We come against hindrances. That Father God, we come against delay. We plead the blood of the lamb over it, it and destroy it now in the mighty name of Jesus. That they will see breakthrough. We declare the month of June is a breakthrough month. Double, double, double for their trouble, my God. We glorify you, Father, and we thank you in your name we pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Thank you for joining me, and we will see you next month.